happening today on newsstands. The latest issue of New Mexico Magazine is on newsstands now. This month's issue features a number of seasonal attractions, including one of the most visually stunning events along the Rio Grande. Joining us now with more is Kate Nelson. She's the managing editor for New Mexico Mag Magazine. Good morning. Good morning. It's you great to be here. You guys have been very, very busy. Very busy. <laughs> um, autumn is a great time in New Mexico. The weather's perfect and, and there's lots of great events. Our cover story is yes. about the Bosque del Apache. The cranes are returning. The cranes are returning <laughs> for a, sure. Along with lots of other birds. Okay. And it's a great time to go down there with the family. Um, the, the festival of the cranes happens mid-November and lots of activities then are, are there to support that and, and you can learn um, all about the birds as well as the other wildlife out there. Some of the ancient Native American um, traditions yes. around that area. Our, everyone who's been there knows the best times to be there are at dawn or at sunset. Okay. Which if you're making a day trip out of it makes it kind of a rough day. Sure. So one of the things our photographer discovered and we suggest ways you can do this too, rent a trailer. Oh, awesome. There's some great little trailer parks to stay in there with other people who are crazy about birds. Yes. And and make a weekend of it. Yeah, well, I mean, the cover is absolutely Isn't that gorgeous? beautiful. And going down there, if you haven't been, is beautiful. It is. As well. Now, moving on to Bandelier National Monument. What do you guys have going on there? When you get to Bandelier, to get to Bandelier, you have to go through the community of White Rock. Uh -huh. And that community recently took on a public art project. Um, if you've been to the Sunport, you've seen those great big pots yes, out in yes. front. They bought a bunch of those pots and then they worked out this really sweet agreement with artists at San Ildefonso Pueblo. Okay. To paint them according to the styles that their ancestors would have up through like the Maria Martina style. Wow, very it's cool. very classic. And we tell the story of the connections that these artists made with their own ancestors, their own relatives in painting these pots. You can now walk along the path and there are plaques explaining which style each one is. So it's a little added incentive to get yourself wow, up to Bandelier. Wow, and they're the big, big pots you're You and I could so hide in one and yeah. still have room to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking of hiding, Pinon. It is pinon season, and pinon once season. they fall, it is basically like you're hunting for pinon because they're in the ground, and you're foraging. You're foraging. They're, you can pick them up off the ground. Some people shake the, the, the branches and get them to fall down on a, on a, a white sheet is probably the smartest thing to do. Uh -huh. It looks like it's a really good year for pinons. Good. So far, it's so good. Uh, we talk about the lore of them, what they've meant to Native American communities, to Hispanic communities, the, the family event of going out to gather them. Yes. It's hot, hard work, and you end up with pine tar all over your hands. Yes. So we also suggest a great way to get them already shelled. Okay. And, and we asked some local chefs for recipes <gasps> of what they would make that they would bring to, say, a Thanksgiving dinner. Yes. So we've got a recipe for stuffed acorn squash and a pinon soup. The Range Cafe gave us an incredible recipe for a chocolate pinon tort. Oh, that sounds so good. And pinon, when you roast it, it becomes very, very sweet. It, it does. So it does work perfectly in a dessert. And it's incredibly nutritious. Really? So you can tell yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're having chocolate, you're actually, if it has pinon in it, you're being healthy. Is that I am. It? <laughs> I am always being healthy. <laughs> well, last, let's talk about the Renaissance Festival. Down in Las Cruces, they have a Renaissance Festival. It starts November 5th, and usually you imagine the jousting knights and the wenches and whatnot. They'll have that. Okay. But in addition, they look at what would a Renaissance Fair have been at that time here in New Mexico. Ah. So they're talking about the 1600s El Camino Real, what kind of people would have been coming up and down the trail? Well, it would have been a lot of craftspeople. Yeah. So they've worked with local craftspeople who, who are samperos and tinsmiths, weavers, jewelry makers, and that's a whole different part of their Renaissance Fair. Yeah. Kind of Spanish market goes south. That's awesome because we don't think about it in terms of New Mexican Right. History. You always think the European Renaissance yes. Fair, but the Renaissance happened here as well. Wow, very, very cool. And that flowering cool. of arts and culture is so important to what we are today as well. Yeah, yes. Well, where can we get a copy of New Mexico Magazine's Hit Stands today, right? It does. If you're smart, it's already been in your newsstand. So be okay. a subscriber. <laughs> Go to nmmagazine.com. We'll give you all the information there. nmmagazine.com, or you can always go to foxnewmexico.com 